Hi everybody and welcome back to the Xenus Super Duty build. Now I am getting ready to install and wire all of the avionics and the lights in my Xenus Super Duty here. But I can't get started until I get my frame back from the powder coater because all the avionics and the panel get mounted to that frame. So in the meantime, I thought I would show you guys some of the tools that we're going to be using to wire an experimental airplane. I have laid out on the workbench here some tools that you're going to need and that you're not going to need for wiring an airplane. All right, well, let's just start down on the end here. You notice I have two cutters here. This is a regular pair of dikes or side cutters, and you don't need these, so we'll put those aside. What you do need is some nice wire cutters like this. Now, what's the difference between these two? Well, on a regular pair of dikes, you can see that the edge is beveled where it cuts. Uh, no big deal for cutting wire, it can still cut wire, but you'll find that if you cut zip ties with this, which believe me, you'll be cutting a million of them with, an, with the wiring job, uh, it still leaves a little bit of that zip tie sticking up that can scratch your hand. If you get a pair of wire cutters like this, and I got, in fact, I think I got all of these tools from Steinair, and I'll, I'll put their link below. You'll notice on the back of this, it's perfectly flat. And they're also very sharp, so they do a great job of snipping off wire. Now you're also going to need a pair of crimpers. And these are the crimpers that you can get at Home Depot or just about anywhere. And these are for wiring your house. So go ahead and get rid of that. What you need is a pair like this. And it's very, although it looks similar to one of these, it's actually very different. And this is the end really that we want to be concerned with. This is how we crimp some of the little metal pins onto the wire that gets inserted into little Molex collect, uh, connectors like this. And again, I'll explain a little bit more and show you how this works when we actually start wiring, but go ahead and order yourself a pair of these. One more crimper that you will need is this one here. And this one has a special jaw up here for three different sizes of these type of terminals. And you'll notice what I like about this is when you squeeze it, it won't release until you go all the way and then it unlocks. So every time you squeeze a terminal, you get a perfect consistent uh, crimp. There is one more crimper that we are going to need and this crimper pictured here will be used for the small little pins that go into some of the Dynon cables that we will have to build. Now, when I wired my Zenith Cruiser, I borrowed this tool from a friend of mine, so I no longer have one. So I actually just ordered another one from Steinair, and once it gets here, I'll have it, but I don't have the actual crimper here to show you. So here is a picture and a link to the crimper that you're going to need. And by the way, all of the tools that I'm mentioning here, I will try to find online or at Steinair, and I'll put a link down in the description box below, hopefully to make it easy for you guys to shop. And a quick note on wire. Uh, you cannot go to AutoZone and buy wire for your airplane. The difference between aviation wire and normal wire you can buy locally, I believe is just in the jacket in that if this burns or catches on fire, it doesn't tend to put off the toxic fumes that cheap wire will do. Uh, of course, you'll pay more for this wire, but you know, remember, you're wiring an airplane, uh, so it's definitely worth getting some aviation wire. Speaking of wire, we are going to need a wire stripper. Now, stripping the end off your wire isn't exactly rocket science, but it is nice to have a professional wire stripper that's made to do the job cleanly. So let me just show you quickly how this works. You'll notice this clamps down on the back here. When you put the wire in here, it clamps down to hold the wire. On the front, you can see there's different size holes for different gauge wire. And when you pull the, or squeeze the handles together, the back of it's holding the wire and the front just strips off the outer jacket. You can see I have a wire in here and you can see the back of it is holding that wire. And on the front, I have it in the appropriate hole here. And let's see if I can do this with the camera focusing. When you just squeeze it together, it pulls that top off and you go. 
but there it goes. You got a nice end to insert into your terminal. Now moving on to terminals, again, you can go to AutoZone and buy terminals, but they are not aviation grade terminals and you do not want to use them. Now I will admit these are all aviation terminals and they're very expensive. Each one of these is like 40 or 50 cents a piece. <laughs> so they add up, but it's definitely worth getting the aviation ones. And let me show you how they differ from AutoZone terminals. All right, I'm gonna to try to draw this while I'm standing behind the camera, but let's take a typical connector or terminal like this. And here's what it looks like. Look at this perfect rendering, huh? Man. All right, there's our terminal. Now inside here, the, obviously this is plastic, right? The outside, and this is metal. This metal comes all the way back to pretty much the very end here. And when you insert your wire, you know, your wire looks like this. Here's your wire, this is the outside jacket, and you have all your strands of wire here, okay? When you insert this, this part of the wire here gets inserted all the way up to here. And the stranded part of the wire goes in here like this. And that crimper I showed you with the blue handle crimps this entire area here. So it crimps it down on the jacket and on the, the braided wire part. And that's exactly what you want for a good secure joint. All right, now let's go to AutoZone and get a connector. And it looks almost identical. It looks pretty much the same just like this. Now there's a big difference though. This metal part only comes back to here. This right here is just left as plastic. And if you crimp that, there's nothing holding it to the wire. So the only place you're getting a crimp is on the braided part of your wire right here. And you know, that works, it will crimp on there, but you're not crimping this part, which really locks that connector onto the wire. So again, they are expensive, but it's definitely worth buying aviation brand uh, terminals. And finally, and probably least importantly, go to Amazon and just order some heat shrink tubing because there are some spots where you may need to splice wires or use this heat shrink tubing for other purposes, but I've always found it handy to have some heat shrink tubing on hand. Well, as you can see, there is not a lot of special tools we're going to need to wire an airplane, but it is important to have the proper tools to do the job properly. What's nice is most of the Dynon cables come completely finished. They already have the ends built at the factory, but obviously not all of them. There are some we're going to have to build ourselves. Also with the lights, in this case, I'm using all aero LED lights on this airplane and we will have to crimp on the little metal connectors that I showed you previously, or pins or connectors, whatever you want to call them, but they get inserted into those Molex connectors. So again, we'll have to have the proper crimp tool to do that job. I'm actually really excited to get started wiring my airplane. Like I said, as soon as I get that cabin frame back from the powder coaters, I'll get started. And I plan to take you guys along for the journey. I do wanna point out one thing though, as you watch these videos, keep in mind that I am not an avionics professional. I'm not a professional airplane builder or avionics installer or anything like that. I do have some experience wiring some different airplanes. And my intention for these videos is not to show you how to run and wire every single wire in this airplane. But I wanna see if I can pass on some of the knowledge that others have taught me uh, to help you get started wiring your airplane. It's actually really fun once you get started doing it, although it does look a little bit intimidating at first, but I think you guys will enjoy it. And uh, I appreciate you watching this video. Hopefully it was helpful with the tools. Again, I will have the link to as many of these tools as I can find online in the description box below. So we'll see you on the next video where hopefully I'm installing the cabin frame.